Welcome everyone to the March 24th Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee call. Uh, as you are all aware, you've been on this call before. There's two things that you must abide by. The first is the antitrust policy notice, which is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is the code of conduct, which is linked in our agenda. So first off, we'll start with the announcements. As always, the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. If you have anything that you'd like to make sure gets included in that, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. And the second thing is the Hyperledger Global Forum. Uh, the CFPs are still open. Uh, they close on April 29th. If you would like to talk at the Hyperledger Global Forum, please uh, submit your CFP for consideration. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make? Okay, so with no announcements, uh, the first thing that we have are the project reports. Um, Hyperledger Ursa came in. I see that uh, most of us have reviewed that. Uh, I think there's only three missing check marks there in the uh, report. Uh, Arun, I did see your comment, so hopefully Cam uh, will see that as well. Uh, I think it's a, a good comment as far as uh, trying to get additional projects using the cryptographic libraries, um, just helping people really understand how they might bring those into their projects. Are there any other questions or comments on Hyperledger Ursa? Anything that anybody feels they, we should be concerned about or um, any, any additional comments there? All right, so with that then, uh, Hyperledger Caliper did come in uh, earlier this week. I did see showing up in my inbox today a, a base two report that is also come in. So we will be able to review those next week um, on their regularly scheduled um, time. The, uh, the Caliper one doesn't have everybody having taken a look at it yet. So we're probably about halfway there. And I personally haven't opened the base one yet, so I have no idea where we're at with that one. Um, it's still really early here uh, for me in the morning. So uh, I think with the project reports, the only other thing that we've got is the outstanding Hyperledger Explorer uh, quarterly report uh, that was due two weeks ago. Any other comments on the, the project reports at this point? Okay, um, so the next item on our agenda is uh, a vote. Um, so the vote is for the mentorship project selection recommendations that came in from the task force. Um, those recommendations picked the uh, different projects that they thought they basically did a ranking for each of them. Uh, as far as whether or not they met the criteria. Um, there are the ones that are listed here, recommended for approval. The only comment I saw come through on uh, chat was uh, from Arun um, related to, uh, a, there were three that basically ended up in a, a three-way tie. Um, I kind of did a tiebreaker and picked one of those. Um, Arun thought maybe I should have picked another one. I provided reasons in the chat as to why I picked the one that I did. And uh, looking at there, um, I, I guess that you're okay with that. Is that correct, Aru? Yeah. Um, sure. I think those are fair points, but I guess we can. I mean, if we are allowed to, probably we can ask them to edit and make corrections. But otherwise, I'm fine with the decision. So let's hear what others think. If nobody has any other questions, then I'm fine with it. Okay. Did, did anybody else have any other comments on the, um, the task force recommendations?
so this is how I'll jump in. I mean, so my understanding is there is only so many you can approve anyway, right? That's right. That's right. So I, I I'm just thinking of what Arun was talking about. You know, there's not much point to me. It seems to ask them to edit if we already have max capacity, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to reject one or the other anyway. Yes. Um, so, Min, I can't remember what were the exact numbers of uh, proposals that we got in and how many we could accept? Yeah, I think we received uh, about 38, uh, maybe 38, 39. I have to do my count again. Um, but we need to select 28 um, to, uh, uh, to put on LFX mentorship platform um, so that Hyperledger Foundation can provide the funding for the selected mentees for those 20. Um, mentorship projects. So yes, we did receive more than we have funding for. Um, so the, the task force kind of uh, did a scoring. Uh, and uh, I think the process went pretty smoothly. Um, there was, as Tracy mentioned, uh, three projects kind of ended up in a tie, kind of the last, you know, we the 27 are pretty clear, you know, winners that should be selected. But the nurse three, they scored uh, exactly the same and we need to pick one out of those three. Um, I think Tracy, you picked the uh, enable Kubernetes operator support for Fablo. Um, but I think Arun, you uh, kind of felt like uh, maybe the supply chain certification solution to track, trace and efficiently uh, certify liquid food grade and dairy transportation. Sorry, it's a long title. Uh, I saw you had a comment, a few comments back and forth with the person who proposed this project. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so I guess just you know, really just uh, asking kind of the TSC. Um, sounds like Tracy, you you think the Kup enable Kubernetes is you know has clear learning outcome. It's it, it's a sort of better defined uh, for mentee to work on it within that kind of defined mentorship program period. Uh, maybe the supply chain one is is a little bit maybe. Um, maybe I'll, I'll let Arun speak to it. I, I don't know um, all the de you know technical details. Um, okay, I think I can repeat what why I felt that project could be supported or why that proposal could be supported. I saw some similarities in the proposal to what Grid already does to some extent. And when I commented mm -hmm. about Grid project, pointed them to the documentation, it felt like they needed a project like that and they wanted to propose a project something like that and um, in one of the great proposals i had seen they're requesting for additional participation from the community they're looking for more contribution so felt that this could be a way they can increase uh, their shares of participants and there is nothing uh, against any project as such but for me, in terms of ranking, probably Fablo would go uh, in the second preference. Or the only reason being there are other projects which does something similar to that already. Yeah, so I'll, I'll add to that because I, when I read the comment um, on the supply chain one, I felt very much like it was, we already are using Fabric, so we're gonna continue to use Fabric which implied to me that grid was out of scope there. Um, and I guess, you know, like I said, the learning objectives and then the scope of the project was really unclear for that versus it was extremely clear in the, the enabled communities operator support for Fablo um, and definitely felt like it could, could have a good opportunity to be successful. Yeah, Arno? Yeah, I was wondering, I mean, you know, I was looking earlier actually at this, uh, the supply chain one, and it st struck me that this is very business oriented. They actually have a platform. They're already talking about customers, bringing more customers. Do we have any kind of policy with regard to this? I mean, the bottom line is to me, they are really trying to advance their own business. <laughs> and it kind of turned me off a little bit to be <laughs> completely fair. But I don't know if this is, you know, this is true for a lot of the 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 internship we have, or is that fairly unique? 
I would say it's fairly unique in uh, that the other projects, at least the ones that I looked at, seem more focused on improving improving the projects themselves. Um, yeah. I think there are some in there that are obviously um, focused on particular use cases, uh, if you will, right from yes. the SIGs. Um, those are probably more like the climate climate use cases and, and those sorts of things, uh, carbon accounting, uh, you know, but they're still, I think, somewhat focused on uh, the projects themselves. Okay, so so that's my impression too. So you're confirming this. So uh, on that basis, uh, you know, for me, that really plays against this supply chain thing, which is really an application that they clearly are, you know, trying to build a business around. So. I think we should favor more open source projects than that. You know, my check on this. Yeah, thanks, Ralph. Any other comments or concerns about any of the, the projects that were selected or recommended? All right, if nobody has concerns, I think I would like to call this to a vote then. I think we have enough people um, to do that. Is that correct? Sean, do we have enough for a quorum? Sorry, I couldn't find my mute button. That's um, okay. Yeah, we've got, um, I'm going to say 9 of 14. Uh, 10 out of, we've got 10 out of the 11 available TSC members are on the call. Okay. Uh, there were three okay. who said they couldn't make it. So we've 10 out of 11. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, any any objections to, to taking this to a vote? And if there are no objections, does anyone want to make a motion? motion. To vote. Second. Peter moves, I, I second. I, I think it was a Peter and Dano motion second together, uh, <laughs> if I got that right. OK, uh, so yeah, Ryan, do you just want to take us through a, a vote, not necessarily person by person, but just a yay nay vote? Sure. Uh, the matter before the, the DOC is to approve the slate of 2022 internship projects. And uh, everyone who is uh, against this motion, please say nay. Anyone that would like to abstain from this vote? And all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes. All right. Make sure I thanks everyone. All right. So the next item on our agenda. Uh, Tracy, I just want to say yeah. a quick thank you. Um, so yes, thank you. I'm very excited. So I'll be in touch with the mentors um, who proposed those projects and got selected. And, and you know, we'll I'll be talking to them about the next steps. And I just want to say a Big thank you to Angelo, Arun, Dano, uh, Kimlish, and Peter, and Tracy, of course, who served on the uh, um, the uh, task force uh, to help us review and uh, score the projects. Really appreciate your help. All right, thanks, Ben. And yes, thanks to uh, the folks who took the time to, to go through them and help us out in selecting those. All right, so the next, Item on the agenda, I uh, just wanted to do, uh, since we obviously had task force update from the mentorship project selection, I wanted to do a quick uh, update around from the security task force, to see how it's going, see if there's anything that the TSC can do to help uh, in that task force. Sure, Tracy, and um, thanks. And, and this, there's definitely um, ways in which we can improve the engagement in the task force, at least in the security task force. So uh, there has been good good participation in the past and uh, where we are probably lagging is taking up the actions that are coming out of those meetings. 
and I don't know how to improve that case. However, there is good participation, at least in, during the meetings. And quick updates on what's happening within the task force. They initially, the discussions were uh, unclear as to what exactly to be focused on. So the initial couple of conversations or meetings were purely into which area of security or what should be the scope of the task force, identifying the areas that we should tackle. This is how um, the initial couple of meetings were went into. And then once we decided to focus on, um, uh, so we, we took references from OpenSSF as well as we took references that were coming in in terms of, uh, for instance, Dano shared on one of the call um, uh, how a vulnerability is reported in BESO and how it was scored against, right? So uh, those points were discussed and then there was an open question that was brought up on how do we measure vulnerability for a blockchain project, given that most of the projects in Hyperledger are blockchain technologies or multi-party systems. And eventually uh, the task force decided that the scope, the scope of the task force itself could be much bigger. So we need to break them down into work streams and eventually even to begin with work streams, we decided to go with writing down a paper, starting with uh, um, identifying the threats and areas, I mean, broad areas under which those threats could occur. And thanks to Hart for, I think, most of the effort and thanks to all the participants so far. So at present, where we would like to have your participation in the task force is to identify the threats, continue identifying those threats. And once, let's say we discuss those threats in one of our meetings, we can start putting down uh, a, a mitigation strategy for each of those threads, or maybe start thinking towards the next steps. So that could lead us to multiple smaller work streams, and we could decide on how to take it further, or maybe break down break down the task force itself, so that it can deliver something at the end of every month or every three weeks, or sorry, every one and a half months, right? So that's. Uh, the brief update about task force and what's happening at the task force. Okay, thanks, Arun. Any, any questions for Arun? So there is, sorry, Dan, um, Hart, did you want to speak up? Oh yeah, I was just gonna point people to the GitHub uh, that we've been working in. Uh, which I will post in the chat. I was about to say the same thing. So there is a channel under TSC. Uh, you can look for security hyphen task force. And you, you may find uh, a repository that Hart had started to put. So that's where all the contributions are going in currently. And uh, I was going to actually ask, um, would it be, what does the TSC think about task forces having a repository? Uh, because I've been just putting this in my GitHub, which is totally fine. Uh, but some people might prefer to have it in a hyperledger GitHub. So. I do not have a problem with posting it under the official Hyperledger org. Anyone else? I, I, I feel the same, I guess. So can we uh, talk maybe about logistics? So how would people feel about if we had a, uh, a folder like task forces, right? So github.com slash hyperledger uh, slash, uh, I don't know. I don't know how we want to lay it out. We probably don't want like a top level folder, but just some folder where various task forces can have GitHub space. So uh, the issue is, the, the issue is this is like 
there, there are, there's no nesting. So um, if you want to go that route, I would just create a new org called, I don't know, Hyperledger Task Forces or something. Um, but I, I think it would probably be better to just, uh, you know, prefix the, the repo name with like, I don't know, TF dash some damn thing or another, and just allow people to sort like that because we don't really, it's not like we, we don't get folders. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that, that makes total sense. That's probably the best way to do it. Uh, I, and I think that, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of different ways to approach this. I know the chat task force did things on the wiki. Um, up till now, I think most of our task forces have done stuff on the wiki. Um, so I think that, you know, in this particular case with the security task force, there's been the desire to, to use GitHub because of the format that you're using for the, the paper um, that you guys are writing. So uh, I think it's, you know, maybe, maybe it depends too on the task force as far as what they really need as to whether or not they need a GitHub repo or not. Absolutely. They may not need it. Mm -hmm. You're, you're right. And that actually, uh, I mean, we could have a task force repo and then have the individual projects, you know, have folders on, within that repo and just, you know, ask people to only merge the stuff in the part of the repo that they care about. That would also work. Okay, any other things on logistics? I think that the reason that I wanted Arun to give this update is I think it's going to be important as we think about how we want to approach task force, um, task forces in the future, right? Um, we're, we're starting to move that direction. And I think that Arun and the, the people who have been participating on the security task force have found some challenges that they have are addressing, right, around making sure that you know exactly what you're working on, uh, making sure that the tasks are small enough to uh, complete, right, which is why the, the kind of breaking it down into subtask, if you will. Uh, the other one is that task forces are not just about attending the meeting, they're about doing things offline uh, and making sure that there's progress being made in, uh, in some way, shape, or form between those meetings. Um, and so, you know, as we approach these task forces that we're, we're starting to kick off, we need to be keeping those things in mind um, so that we don't run into similar problems that other task forces have. Okay, no additional thoughts on that before we move on to the next topic. Yeah, Arun? So, I mean, I see some of the task forces do have, these task forces would be beneficial, especially on the ones, the ones that, that would matter for rest of the projects. If there are more, participants from those project teams, uh, if they are joining in those task force, right? And uh, the chart task force was successful because I guess everybody were involved in, in pushing information out of the task force and then sharing it across in different forums, collecting feedback from different project teams. So that, I, I guess that kind of participation may not be possible all the time. Is there any suggestion on how do we get those project teams get involved into these task force? Anybody have any suggestions? Well, my question would be, do they know about the task forces? If they do, then I would assume that if they think they have a reason to be there or they have an interest to represent, then they join. But uh, if they, if you're not even sure if they are aware, then that's probably the first problem to fix. Okay. 
think another concern is uh, even if they're aware, is it something they want to do? Because we have a lot of maintainers in some of these projects that are low level that don't necessarily um, want to move, you know, quote unquote, up the chain to deal with hyperledger wide issues. Um, some of them do, some of them don't. We should, you know, make it available, make it known to them. But it's just like the 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 uh, maintainer acquisition funnel. You got people who are using it, people who are contributing it, and not everyone who contributes want to maintain it. And I think similarly, there's not everyone who who maintains a project necessarily wants to get involved in what is basically leadership tasks for the entire hyperledger org and they might view that as the task force but on the other hand task force participation can be a very low thing because it's not a high commitment that like attending a tsc meeting every week would be there's a problem that they are the experts in so i think on the other hand of that coin we should encourage people to join these task forces that don't require require the same level of commitment <clears throat> especially when they have domain specific knowledge would be very helpful in some of these task forces. All right, thanks Peter, thanks Dana. Any any other comments, Hart, you came off mute, you were gonna say something? You are really observant, Tracy. Yeah, um, yeah I was just gonna say, I think this highly depends on the task force. Uh, some of the task forces require a lot of domain specific knowledge, some of them don't. Uh, so, so I'm not sure there's a, a one size fits all solution for all of this. Um, I think the best way to, uh, well, you know, one of the best ways to get people interested in task forces are to, to give them teeth. So if people think that they're going to be affected by a task force, uh, there's a lot more incentive to join. Um, you know, sort of the, the performance and scale working group is a classic example of this. When it had teeth, tons of people joined. And as soon as its ostensible mission was over, uh, not so many people joined. Um, and the other thing is, is you know, I, I guess just uh, make the task forces uh, things that people want to work on and, and uh, you know, for, for some of these, we need to we need to recruit more uh, domain specific experts. Yeah, and I would I would say having a good um, a good description of what these task forces are, right? Why why are these task forces important? Um, what is it that uh, they're attempting to accomplish? What are the deliverables that they're working on? Right, all of the things that we do have in our uh, task force guidelines. That should probably be the very first thing that we uh, work on um, work on developing. I, we we have proposed these task forces, the ones that we we're talking about today, as well as the security task force within the uh, within the TSC meetings, and they haven't necessarily got themselves to uh, document kind of that that introduction, the background, why we're doing this. Uh, what are we working on? Uh, what are we looking to complete uh, the the task by? So I think that's a, another piece of advertising, right? As I, I believe it was Peter said, right? Uh, getting people to know that these task force exist. Start with documenting what these task force are. Um, so that's probably the the other piece of that that we could look at. Okay, um, so let's then uh, talk about the email that I sent to the TSC mailing list, of which one person responded. Uh, the poll that has been in the TSC agenda, of which five people, I believe, have voted. Um, I'd like to, to vote on this, of how do you want to approach these task force meetings? Uh, and so in the in Discord, I'm going to put a link to the agenda so that you guys can go in and select the option that you think is the best approach for task force meetings so that we can decide how we want to handle these moving forward. And yes, that was me nicely calling you all out for not responding to my email. I'm feeling lonely, guys, I guess is the problem. 
I did respond to the poll, though, right? Oh, I know. Yes, there are. There are. Yes, you you have responded. If you go into the agenda and you see that there's uh, some numbers there, some percentages, that means you voted for it. So, um, and Peter, I did see your vote come in. Yes. And we could vote for only one, right? We can't just check all the ones we like. That's right. We I would for our favorite. The, the <laughs> favorite one, because otherwise we were probably going to end up with all of them being our favorite. Uh, and then we wouldn't come to a, a conclusion, which I <laughs> would like to see if we can come to some sort of conclusion there. All right. So it looks like we now have 10 votes in. Uh, which is still not everybody who's on the call. I know because of the fact that a couple of people who are not on the call actually voted. So if you have yet to vote, please do so. Tracy, do you want non-TSC members to vote? If you are going to participate in the task force and you think that's important, yes, definitely go ahead. All right, thank you. Sorry to yeah. interrupt you. No, 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 not a problem now. All right, um, so with that, we do have quite the spread. Uh, all of them got at least one vote, which I guess is interesting and important for us to know. Um, and the one that got the four votes is the post one TSC call per month and use the other weeks to rotate um, between the task force topics. And then uh, all of them, except for the continue to use a separate time slot for hosting task force calls, got two votes. Um, so we're really very split on how we'd like to approach this uh, going forward. Anyone want to talk about why they voted for the one that they did? Yeah, go ahead, Arno. Sorry, I uh, was having a problem right. back to Zoom. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I so I did not vote for the most popular option, and I have to admit, <clears throat> it surprises me a little bit that most people favor this because it seems to me that you know we're basically means we would skip three calls from the current schedule, reduce like to twenty five percent. That's a drastic change. And it's not like, look, we're already almost past the hour. And, and it's not like we're lacking, you know, uh, topics to discuss on those calls. So I'm a bit worried that this is a bit too extreme. And uh, I'd be interested to hear from people how they see this working out. And uh, okay. by the way, I, I, I selected one of the other one, the bi-weekly, I forget which one, but... Uh, <laughs> Okay, that's that's great. Thank you, Arno, for bringing that up. Nathan, which one did you vote for? Uh, I why? voted. I voted for the one of the standard TSC call for the first thirty minutes, and then the breakout rooms afterwards. So I must admit that a lot of these options are more or less equivalent to me, um, in the sense that uh, I agree with Arno that often the TSC topics need to be timely, uh, meaning it's 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 more helpful for us to be able to discuss project issues when uh, they haven't gone for a few months before they get brought up. Um, and so I like the idea that there's a TSC call at least bi-weekly. I, I also think that for the task forces to, to keep their momentum, we often have to meet often enough that people feel like they get an assignment and they need to do it right away before it gets buried in their task list of other things so that there's, um, a way of getting things done and having some accountability on a regular cadence, which is why I, I in particular, I picked the breakout rooms, even though I think a lot of us would like to participate in all the different things we might have the task forces for, or at least be able to, to follow along on the calls. Uh, I think that if we make either the TSC only meet once a month or the task forces only meet once a month, we're not likely to make the kind of progress we hope to make. Okay, good, good points. Peter? 
So the, the first assumption I made was that if we make a choice and then be tried for a month or two and then we end up being unhappy with it, then we can just go back to a different one or how it were and no shame, sort of just trying it out. And uh, the reason I voted for the one that's popular is because I am curious to see if it would uh, increase efficiency in the sense that the chat and the mailing list would maybe get more usage because we would only have the main meeting once a month and then the task forces would be focused. So I would expect the task force meetings of the month to be getting more done than the big meetings. And at the same time, because people only meet once a month for the big meeting, I would expect uh, communication to continue on and to be more lively than it is now in the mailing list and the chat. So that's kind of my experiment. And uh, I'm totally not afraid to just uh, come back here a month or two later and be like, oh, maybe that did not work. All right, thanks, Peter. Bobby? Yeah, I voted for the um, alternate week hosting the topics during the TSC call, because that way then the TSC is involved in all the task force and gets the information um, on a timely manner. And if one task force is accelerating and needs to discuss more, we, you know, that's something that can take up more time in that half hour for that task force that week so that each one gets their point to or what they're working on out to the TSC. Okay. okay no. So you're gonna hate me. I liked uh five of the first six options um where somehow during the TSC call we get some aspect of the task force in. But another thing I noticed is if you group by TSC call frequency, you get four votes each, four votes for once a month, four votes for bi-weekly, and four vo votes for weekly. And where those other two break down is whether they want it in a breakout room or a regular room. So I think this is like, it may look like the plurality is voting for once a month, but I think there's really no consensus on, on a frequency right now. All right, thanks Dana for digging in and looking at that in more detail. Um, gives us some good information, Dave. Uh, I had to drop out of the last call, so I couldn't talk about, I guess, when we when we brainstorm the options. But um, my preferred approach would be kind of a hybrid of several of these where we have a combination of breakouts um, where people make progress on a task force on a regular cadence and then report back to the TSC. Maybe that's in like the 30 minute section of the TSC. But I think that's kind of a hybrid that it's not one of these options encapsulated kind of what I had in my mind about how task forces would work in breakout sessions and then come back to the TSC with their findings and then additional discussion. Okay, thanks Dave. That's a different way of looking at it. Uh, Troy? Yeah, I think most of the points I was thinking about have already been said. Um, I think if we look at the kind that the breakdown right now, it looks like people are leaning towards splitting um, between um, uh, the TSC call and uh, uh, the task force topic kind of evenly, um, if, if that's the second, third, fourth, and fifth topics or votes in here. Um, so yeah, I, I would guess that we really shouldn't say that the first one has the most votes right now. Um, I think there is a pretty even split and the points about, you know, waiting a full month between um, meetings would seem like you'd lose momentum. So I, I kind of feel those are good points. Okay, thanks, Troy. Hart? Hey, thanks. Uh, one thing that worries me about two infrequent meetings, uh, and I put this in chat, is if we have topics that take a long time for discussion. So maybe some of you remember how long it took, say, for the, the Firefly proposal to be discussed. Uh, now imagine we do that instead of once a week, we do that once a month, right? It would literally take us years to, uh, to, to approve projects in this case. Um, so I, I'm not sure that sort of once a month is uh, is always enough. 
you know, maybe it's enough in the aggregate on the average, but I, I think we need to make sure that when topics like that come up, you know, we, we need to have, have time to discuss them. Um, and Peter, I don't know if you saw my comment in Discord either, uh, but I, I really appreciate your optimism that uh, less frequent meetings will cause people to engage more. Uh, but uh, I'm not optimistic about that. And it's someone who tends to procrastinate myself. Uh, I think deadlines are a good thing. Okay. Um, so thank you all for that. The, uh, I guess the challenge that I see is we have a limited time we have one hour each week to talk about things, be them TSC topics and or task topics, task force topics, if we decide to put task forces in with the TSC meeting, which I think all except one of us lean towards, yeah, let's use part of the TSC meeting in some way, shape or form for task forces. Um, so my concern is an hour is uh, actually not a long time for the amount of discussion I think is going to be required, um, especially if we're saying, okay, it's only going to be 30 minutes or it's going to be part of the hour. Uh, if we uh, think about what Dave suggested, right, where we, we have the opportunity to report back on, you know, a discussion that happened. Um, and, and so this, this is, I think, leading to the, the concern that I think we all kind of have is how do we ensure we're making progress and moving forward in accomplishing what is being said and done in the task force um so peter uh i see you brought your hand up i don't know if something i said there um made you put your hand up but happy to have you add to this no it was just i was just going to add to uh, hard said, sorry. Too no, no, go. That's okay. That's okay. I, I was actually uh, saw your hand, and I also saw the uh, message that Hart put in the Discord, which is I think my preferred approach would be to use on the fly TSC slash task force scheduling. Um, so yeah, I, I guess go ahead, Peter. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go, and then I'm gonna make a suggestion about maybe how we proceed forward. Okay. Yeah, so I, I read the chat just now, and I, I can definitely see those points as well. So I'm not hell bent on the vote that I made. And uh, I guess one thing that I may have thought of differently is the level of dynamism that they would have with creating, like spinning up new task forces. I thought of it in a way that. Anything and everything that we would normally do in the regular meeting can be, can and will be spin or spun off into a separate task force. And then there will be people accountable for working on that specifically instead of just, uh, you know, being able to be in the big pool with everyone and sort of not really participate as much as if you were on the task force and uh when i imagined it this way that uh every single task that we have in the big meeting is actually now taken care of by a task force then that's why i envisioned that communication would be fostered because people would feel a little more pressure to engage on account of them actually being on the task force instead of just being on the TSC that has a lot of topics to discuss and then some can be engaged in some, I mean, all can be engaged in, but some just won't. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm making that point perfectly clearly, but that's how I was imagining it. And I'm now seeing that maybe that's this dynamism of the task forces. Maybe I overestimated how much we are planning this. Maybe it's a, it's a little more overhead to form a task force and then some tasks will just 
not get taken care of because uh, of the overhead of creating a new task force for it. So I'm totally open to talking more about that specific part as well. Okay, yeah, I, Peter, I think both times that you've talked, what I've heard from you is you're looking to try and figure out how to get more engagement, um, more participation uh, in the way that we communicate, be, be it via email or meetings or participating in these task forces. And I think that's definitely the, the thing that I'm for as well. Uh, you know, it's part of why I took us a, a step back a couple of weeks ago and said like, what, what do we need to do differently? And I think that's where this task force idea came from. Um, and is the hope that we will engage more. Um, we will participate more in the discussions and, um, you know, move things forward. Arno? Yeah, quickly, I, I just wanted to point out, you can change your vote. It yes. Is a, at the bottom, it says undo. <laughs> you see your vote and it says undo. So maybe there are people who want to update their votes. It would be interesting. Yes, I, I think that's a good point, Arno. And I saw Nate, uh, Nathan, you had commented, uh, maybe we should revote. Um, and, and I think that's perfectly fine, right? Um, feel free if you think that based on the conversation that we've had, uh, you would like to change your vote, uh, please do an undo and uh, recast your vote for one of the other options based on the discussion that you've heard. So I'll give us all a moment to decide if we want to undo and if we would like to um, to do something different here. Might be right, a little so I, than that. I'm having trouble logging into the okay. <laughs> all right. So I am seeing some uh, changes happening uh, as we go through here. So I will give us all just a moment to make sure that we can get ourselves logged on and um, in a place where we can get ourselves changing our votes if we think we want to change our votes. And there's no need to change your votes. Um, if you still like the one that you picked, that's fine. All right, anybody need more time? I do, sorry. No, no, that's okay. Let, let us know, Peter, when you're at a place that you think you're good. <laughs> Seems we have so, a new winner regardless. Right, uh, that's that's exactly right. Um, so far we've got eight votes uh, and those eight votes are for the, use the TSC call to discuss standard business for the first 30 minutes and the second 30 minutes to discuss task force topics on a rotational basis. And I think what's unsaid in that is that the task force is have their own meetings separately and make progress on their own separately, right? I would definitely think if not meetings on their own communication and uh, work towards whatever that deliverable is uh, in the time frame between their uh, opportunities to talk, yes. All right, uh, so let's let's take that approach for uh, at least a month or so, see how it goes, uh, maybe a couple months get us through the task forces um, a couple of times at least and see if we decide that it's not working, that we need to make a, a change, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, we're not locked into anything here. So um, with that, uh, before we uh, move out of the meeting, I have one last thing to uh, discuss here. And that is the task force chair selection. I did uh, put names next to each of the task forces uh, that we had talked about previously. I know I've talked to Dano about the first one. What projects are we missing with Hyperledger? And Dano, you're still good with that um, 
being the chair and driving that forward? Yes. Okay. And I was going to take the Project Families website revamp and help us drive that one forward. Um, Arno, uh, you had suggested last week, I think in chat, that you were going to put together a PR, um, but I did put your name against that particular task force. Are you still yeah. good with that? The, yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, and then Jim's not here, um, but we'll see if we can get Jim to agree to uh, chair and lead the, the project health dashboards um, as we move forward. So I think just last uh, item is if nobody has any objections to this, I'd like to proceed with next week doing the first 30 minutes for standard TSC business and then the second 30 minutes with starting in the order that we have them listed. Uh, what projects are we missing within Hyperledger as our first topic um, for the, the second 30 minutes? And then the following week will be the project families and so on and so forth. Any objections? Heart, was that a yes or no? That was a sounds great, Tracy. And then I okay. realized that you asked for objections. But, uh, it's all good. Thanks, Heart. Dave? Uh, do we have any way to? sign up for a task force or I know we talked about you know wanting people to to take part to participate in at least one of them um, do we have a way to form, formalize that or is just reach out to the chair could we create chat rooms in discord and if you're interested poke in and say hi would that work sure That'll that work works fine. yeah okay uh, any other uh, business today that anybody would like to discuss? All right, nobody coming off mute, nobody's going, raising their hands. I will take that as a no, and I will then conclude the call, and we will talk to you again next week. Thanks a lot, Tracy. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.